let's shift and let's start talking about Instagram. When did you start taking Instagram seriously? Uh, I would say probably late last year, um, somewhere end of summer. That's probably when I took it seriously. I was on it for about a year and a half. And uh, I think I, I sat with a couple hundred followers for quite a while. But uh, once I started maybe June, July, August, somewhere in there, I started realizing that uh, I just enjoyed taking pictures of our jobs, showing them off. And Instagram was the place to do it. Okay. So you were on Instagram for a couple years, year and a half, whatever. And then somewhere around June or July, you decided to take it seriously. How did that, how did you um, come to that realization? Like, were you watching other people or just start thinking about it? Or how did that happen? Honestly, I don't think I recall, Martin. I think I I just really enjoyed uh, sharing. You know, I enjoyed sharing. I had a great passion for what I was doing, and I didn't get a ton of feedback, but I was getting some people that just had, a, you know, no idea about a post-frame building. They kind of were in awe that it could go up in a week or two weeks, and so it kind of fed on itself. I started saying, hey, I'm going to post more. I think people will enjoy this, and... It did. I mean, they took off, and it's been good. Okay. How many posts do you do per day, and was that something that it has changed, or has it been consistent all along? No, it's changed. I think I used to do more. I would post a lot, and maybe it wasn't as focused. It was kind of just in the moment because, obviously, I'm on the job site building all day, so my pocket is, you know, my phone's in my pocket. I'm not really thinking about it. And then you step back and you think, oh, I'm going to take a picture real quick. But, uh, you know, I kind of started to think, let's, let's kind of calm this down. I don't want to over overdo it to anybody. I don't want them to be turned off by getting our, our buildings post every 10 minutes. So probably in the last, you know, few months, I've toned it down. I try to do three posts a day. I think about when I'm on Instagram, and which is usually when I wake up eating breakfast. Maybe I go on at lunch. And then I'm back on it maybe after dinner or something. So that's kind of when I post, usually, typically. Um, but the analytics on uh, Instagram kind of give you a good uh, indication as to when your followers are on anyway. So that's that's the other thing I look at. Do you look at analytics quite a bit? Yeah, every day. I mean, very, very often. I look at it all the time. What are you looking at when you look there? Uh, mostly I'm looking at, uh, the time frame. I'm looking at when they're on. I'm looking at, uh, who they are. I'm, you know, 90% of my followers are male in the ages of 25 to 34. So they're me, right? I mean, I'm posting, um, to people that are basically myself. So I think that's, you know, important to realize that I'm not posting to women. So I don't have to maybe post certain content. I'm posting more of the real everyday stuff that, is going on in my job. Mm -hmm. Do you use a lot of hashtags and how do you decide which ones to use? Well, I, I think that's actually probably why my um, feed didn't really take off initially. I didn't understand any of that. I didn't really do anything. I might have put a hashtag that I thought was clever once in a while, but for the most part, I never did it. And then, uh, you know, I got invited to a group, thanks to you, Martin, that, uh, kind of showed me that hashtags maybe were important, not maybe they were. And I started looking at hashtags. I talked to guys that told me, you know, kind of what to look for. And, uh, so I kind of developed just a little set of hashtags. So what do you look for when you look for hashtags? Like, how does that work? Well, basically the way it was explained to me, you know, if somebody's going to look up a hashtag, let's say love, right? I mean, I love post frame and I could type hashtag love. There's a million hashtags or things that have been hashtag love. You're going to post that and it's going to be gone. I mean, this is the way I understood it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, if you type or you, you want people to see your picture with the hashtag love, it's going to be almost impossible because it's, it's going to be, it's going to hit that feed. And then there's going to be a million people right behind you that are going to type in love and you're going to be gone. So I try to find a hashtag that's popular but not overpopular, something that's, you know, maybe in that 100,000 
you know, used hashtag or whatever. Where, where do um, you find that, those numbers? Well, when you go to type in your hashtag, it'll usually give a little pull up of like hashtags that are similar to the one you're typing. And then it will tell you off to the side how many, uh, how many times that's been used. Okay. That's, that's the way I understand it anyway. Mm -hmm. So then you started focusing on hashtags that related to your business or were you trying to find hashtags that people would be searching for or like, how do you do that? Well, I, I just came, you know, I was looking at hashtags that were related directly. You know, I don't want to bring people to me that don't really bring me value, you know, that don't really care about what I'm doing, that are just there because a, a whim hashtag brought them there. I, I would rather have less followers following me that are engaged and care about what I'm doing. So I just try to focus it on post frame construction, you know, things that are related to me, what I'm doing. What happened when you started folk, um, posting more hashtags? Um, I mean, it's 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 got to be a good thing because I've noticed uh, an increase in uh, people coming over and saying, "Hey, I love your feed. Uh, this is amazing," and you know they start following me. Mm -hmm. So you know, I don't know how I would have ever got them otherwise. Let's talk a little bit about engagement. Um, how, what's your policy on engagement? I've seen some guys who never respond to a private message. I've seen some guys who, um, never respond to a comment on their post. And then there's some people who respond to every single one. Uh, where are you at in all that? Um, I try to be as engaged. I, I try the same policy that I keep myself for running my business. If somebody calls me, I answer it or I respond as quick as possible. If I get a message, I'm either answering it, you know, instantaneously because I'm on or it's being answered, you know, right away. I don't, I don't ever let that stuff go. I don't have a, a message in my inbox that has a dot next to it saying unread. I mean, they're all read responded and I'll, I'll be honest, I've started, uh, responding to every follower. When I get a new follow notification, I let them know I appreciate it. And it's, it's amazing. The people that instantly respond back. Wow. This is amazing. You actually, you know, I've never been told thank you for a follow. Is and, that something you, know, you do manually or do you have software that does that for you? No, I do it manually because it's usually, uh, you know, just a, it's a different, you know, thank you. It's a little, you know, I might, two sentences and it's just whatever I'm feeling at the time, you know, I might throw a couple emojis in there, little fist pounds, whatever. But, uh, I haven't, my wife has been telling me to do a lot of this auto stuff, you know, that way when I post to IG, it'll go to Facebook, it'll go to Twitter, whatever. But I, I just haven't done it. And I know it would make my life a lot easier, but at the same time, I don't ever want to turn into a robot. I want to be organic as, as possible. I know a lot of people are, are, shaking their heads right now saying, how do you respond yeah. to every single person that follows you and yep. leaves a comment and sends you a direct message? <laughs> yeah, it's, I think my wife would call me crazy too, Martin. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's as much my job to respond to them personally as it, it you know, they don't have to come to me. They don't have to ask me a question. Um, so, you know, whether I know the answer or not, I'm going to do my best to help them because if I was them, which I have been them, I have reached out to people. And I guess when you get a response from somebody that you might look up to or think, you know, has something that you need and uh, some knowledge or whatever, you, you just feel great about it. You know, it's like, yes, that guy responded to me. I remember when Kevin O'Connor from this old house gave me a like and replied to a comment that I had done. And I thought to myself, wow, that is awesome. I've idolized, you know, these guys. I've watched them on TV since I was little. And, you know, so I'm not saying I'm Kevin O'Connor. Trust me. I have, you know, nowhere near that uh, level of prestige. But if, if somebody reaches out to me and I can help them, why, why wouldn't I? So overall, in general, you have really enjoyed using Instagram to reach out to other contractors and help guys. Um, mm -hmm. learn more about your trade and your craft, but are there any other motives that you have with being on Instagram? Um, I think Instagram started as a fun thing. I think it was enjoyable in a sense that I just got to showcase my work. I think it has since moved into maybe more of a tool, a branding tool that I didn't really understand. I mean, you know, I've got plenty of work. I don't really require advertising. I don't advertise anywhere. I just kind of do my thing and 
you know, my customers say to their friends, why don't you call Kyle for that next building? So that, that's been my, my money generating, you know, uh, lead generator, whatever. But Instagram has allowed me to, I guess, showcase my brand, who I am, what we're doing. And, uh, that's kind of where I've tried, you know, using it or tr- I tried using it for. Mm-hmm. That's great. Now, look, are you on YouTube? Yep. I started doing YouTube. I'm trying to kind of give more longer length, um, instructional or, you know, videos that kind of showcase the day. It's kind of in its infancy. I don't have a ton of content up there, but, uh, you know, Instagram with a minute video, you can't really get it all out there in maybe what you want people to see. So YouTube has allowed me to kind of do longer videos. Um, and I think it's, it's important, you know, don't want to put all your stuff in all your eggs in one basket. I don't want to just be on Instagram. I'm trying to do Twitter too. And, uh, YouTube. Great. All right. Before we move on to something else, what, um, if anything else, would you like to share with us about Instagram or YouTube or social media? Um, I think the biggest thing is probably in social media in general, you know, just do you don't, don't do someone else. Don't, don't be fake and try to imitate or, uh, you know, follow the way someone else is doing their thing. I mean, everybody's got their little niche and I feel like the guys that are genuinely doing something different or doing themselves, they're probably going to be the most successful. So, you know, once again, just like your trade, you know, your trade, try to specialize, try to be you and do what makes you happy. Great. People, take, people take to that. I think we didn't talk about Facebook. Are you on Facebook? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. You know, I think Facebook pages is, um, you know, I think it's still, you got to be there, right? I mean, it's not going anywhere. So I, that is probably the only place that occasionally gets like a repost, uh, automatically from Instagram. I'll just let it, you know, flop over there. But, uh, I, I still check it that way. I can answer any questions. People are reaching out to me because it's mostly going to be my local, um, you know, group of people that I might need a building or their friends. So I always, I'm always checking it, but I don't, I don't invest a lot of time into it. I don't really see a benefit right now. Okay. Is that your, is that also our, our buildings? Um, that's rural renovators, I do believe. All right. Yeah, I think so. I've had that since, you know, day one being in remodeling and stuff. So that's kind of where the name comes from. Kind of everybody deserves a little R and R. So call us for your rural remodeling needs. 